Hi, my name is Jay. I am a postdoc at the Scientific Data Division. Today, I'm going to talk about a GNN-based track finding algorithm. So track finding or track reconstruction is an essential task in the public experiment. And so for people who are not familiar, here is an event display of a proton-proton collision that happens at the center of the atlas detector. The protons are coming from the so-called Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, which is a circular accelerator in Geneva, Switzerland, with the circumference of 27 kilometers. So it is a very long base accelerator. Uh, the protons collide at the center of the detector, and each collision produces thousands of particles. So as you can see in this event display, so this is a single collision, and a bunch of particles are produced and travel from the center of the detector and throughout the whole detector. Now what we'd like to do is to know how each of these particles travel through the detector. In other words, we want to know the trajectory of these particles. However, this is not as straightforward as you would think because the way the detector works is that as the particles travel through the detector, they leave electrical signals, which we call hits, layer by layer, as they interact with each layer of the detector materials. And our detector actually doesn't know which particles these hits belong to. So what we need to do is basically find the right group of hits and say, okay, these hits are coming from the same particle. In other words, we want to assign a label to each hit, and ideally, the hits that are coming from the same particle should share the same label. So traditionally, we use the algorithm that is called the combinatorial Kalman filter, the CKF, which generally performs a trajectory fit to all the possible combinations. And as you can imagine, due to the combinatorial nature, it can be very computationally expensive, especially as the number of particles increases. Therefore, there's a lot of efforts recently looking for an alternative that uses machine learning with the goal that the computational cost should scale approximately linearly with the event size. And given the geometric nature of the particle tracks, it's actually very natural to consider using graph techniques for track reconstruction. Now, let me begin to explain our idea. So for each event, we treat each hit as a node. So node number zero, number one, number two, and three. These are the hits. And the hits that are possibly from the same particle are connected by the so-called edges. So here you can see the edge number zero one connects number node number zero and node number one. And the edge zero two connects the node number zero and node number two. And the same for the edge zero three that connects node number zero and node number three. By doing this, we can reframe the tracking problem into an edge classification. So what this edge classification means is that we want to classify each edge as a true or a fake connection by assigning an edge score to each edge. True meaning the two hits this edge connects are from the same particle and vice versa. And what is beautiful is that since each edge is considered individually, Mathematically, the computational costs to scale linearly, which is our goal. And after this, all we need to do is to remove what we think are the fake edges by applying the score cuts. And each connected component will be taken as the track candidates. And to dive a little bit into the detail of the edge classification, the network learns the edge scores through the message passing, where we iteratively first update the node representation from the adjacent edges. Then we update the edge representation from the adjacent nodes. So with this GNN-based tracking pipeline, 
we apply it to the simulated events of the Atlas detect group. What you see here is the GNM pipeline computing time versus the number of hits for each simulated event. Each dot is an event, and the origin line is fit to all of these points. The takeaway message is that, as expected, the computing time scales approximately linearly with the event size. While we reach our goal in terms of the scalability, we also need to make sure that the new method retains the same level of accuracy. Here is a comparison of the track reconstruction efficiency between the GNM pipeline and the traditional CKF algorithm. And this is compared along the spectrum of the transverse momentum of each particle. Here and here we use the PT as the notation of the transverse momentum. Generally, we get comparable performance to CKF, although we do notice a consistently slightly lower efficiency from the GNN than from the CKF. And I just want to point out that this is just a preliminary results and we will continue to optimize the pipeline. So hopefully we'll get better performance in the future. So in summary, the GNM-based track finding utilizes graph structure of each collision event and reframes the tracking problem into the age classification, which is performed through the message passing. So this allows particle experiments to be computationally sustainable where the computational cost scales linearly and at the same time the physics performance is retained. As the results are still preliminary, there's still a lot of room for improvements both physics-wise and computation-wise. So stay tuned!